much for joining us today. We want you to know uh, as we get started this morning, we're going to have a great time together. We will have some additional chairs if at any point in time, uh, especially as we have some of our, our little ones and all, if they get to a point where it's like, oh man, my little one ain't going to make it through today. Uh, don't forget that we do have a welcome center immediately, like right outside these doors to the right. Uh, the service is viewed at that same time the same. It's the same live service there, uh, except the difference is that there's like comfortable couches and a table and other places you sit. Some of y'all may want to make that like your regular Sunday morning occurrence to join us up there. And so just kind of be aware of that. It is Mother's Day. We're going to keep things moving in a great way. And so it'll be an opportunity for us to worship. So thank y'all for joining us today. Look, what we want to do is, as we get started, uh, we've got a great number of folks that are going to be dedicating their children and themselves to the Lord today. And what we want to do is we want to actually dismiss them. Now, when they get up, do not take their chair because they're coming back to it in a second, all right? And so um, those of you who are going to be dedicating your children to the Lord today, would you kind of make your way out these doors right there? And then there's going to be some folks that will help you uh, around the corner. And so we want to get you all situated and we'll be able to do that in the Welcome Center. And so that'll give us an opportunity to kind of, uh, we want to take your picture and everything else. And so um, as you see that, we just praise the Lord for that. Christy, you can come on down to the front row. We got it made just for you. It's like a regular occurrence, so come on in for that and stuff. And so, um, so thank y'all. We do want to just take a moment to dismiss those folks who are going to be having their babies dedicated to the Lord today. All right. Yeah, you can make your way right on out that door, and so thank y'all. Appreciate that. As they bring them out, I think there's a song that Brother Waylon wants to lead us in. Would you listen to this for just a moment as we worship the Lord? All right, y'all know this. Why don't we stand together as we worship the Lord together this morning? Amen. Let's sing together. Sing this out with us. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future.
gracious to you. The Lord turned his face toward you. Let's sing this with all of our heart. Amen. 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 Let's sing it one more time. family and your children and their children and their children may his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you he is with you he is with you come on church in the morning and the evening in the coming and you go in, in your weeping and rejoicing. He's for you. 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 Come on, sing it out. Amen. seated this morning. Amen. Good to see y'all in the house of the Lord as you're seated. Would you look around you, somebody? Would you just kind of wave at somebody? Just greet them together uh, this morning. Good to see you in the house of the Lord. So thankful for you. Could, could you tell somebody next to you just uh, happy Mother's Day? Would you tell somebody that today and stuff? And so um, we are just thankful for your, uh, your presence, just being here. Amen. Good to see y'all in the house of the Lord. Look, for those of you watching online, whether you're at the campgrounds in Tylertown or whether you're there in uh, South Carolina, we've got a lot of different folks that are watching. Welcome you as well. I want to give you a couple quick announcements that you may be noticing that, um, man, th this place is kind of packed full. Uh, you probably notice if you come to Westside, it is always good to get here early or your seat may not be here after a while. And so uh, th that is a rule in Sunday school to get in and out as quick as possible because of the fact that your seat may be gone. So thank you for joining us no matter where you are from. If you are here to see some of these babies being dedicated, we just welcome you here to Westside Emanuel Baptist Church. Next Sunday, I want you to know it'll be a great time as well. We're going to be recognizing graduates. We have a number of graduates that are going to be graduating this, uh, this year. And so we want to recognize those folks and just thank the Lord for them. And so we want you to be aware of that. And so if you have any um, uh, folks that are going to be graduating, high school seniors specifically, if you have them, Brother Drake, could you just stand up, turn around in your best van impression, wave at folks. That's the man that you need to talk to, okay? If you have a child that needs to be, um, that needs to be uh, 
acknowledge during our senior graduate recognition service. Uh, we want to, uh, to make sure that we get them. Uh, even embarrassing like little pictures that we need of them as well would be a great way to do that. Um, the 22nd, and then hopefully you'll have an opportunity to go by our welcome center before you leave today. On the 22nd, our children, they're getting ready for children's camp. Our children are actually doing a chicken dinner fundraiser. It'll be half a chicken. I mean, not just like a whole chicken, not a quarter, but an entire half of a chicken, baked beans, potato salad, a roll, and a dessert. Um, and so that'll be an opportunity for us to just raise funds to send our kids to camp. If you uh, have not signed up, we only have 150 of those available, and so they're going out pretty quickly. Uh, the sign-up sheet is there in the Welcome Center. Hopefully you'll be able to, uh, to sign up for that. If you'd like one, it's dine-in or carry-out, and so we'll be able to do those things. The kids are actually singing on the 22nd of, uh, of May as well, and so if your kid uh, comes on Wednesday, we've had about like, I think last week we had, what, 40 seven kids or something for our little kids and so it'll be a great time but they're actually going to be singing up here on stage if we can fit 47 brother Waylon, i guess we can they're doing hand motions the way maker and so uh, it'll be a great time a lot of those kids are singing that in their cars as well and so we're just thankful for that uh huge thanks and let me do this Thank you to those who watch online as well. We've got a number of folks who from other places have actually given towards this thing called Faithful 50. We're looking for 50 folks who will be able to give $50 in order to help send our kids to camp and invest in these children in the eternity as well. And so just a huge word of thanks to those. Some of you have already done that. Uh, if you're not sure, how do I do that? That little QR code, take your phone, go to the photo app, take a little picture of that thing, and it'll click on there, and it'll be an opportunity. You may say, well, I want to learn more about Westside. You can do it through that. You may say, well, I want to give at Westside. You can use these boxes or you can even give it through uh, online as well or you may say well well how do I register my kid or how do I take care of these things you can do that all through that little QR code and so hopefully you'll have an opportunity to do so we are so thankful to you to be here with us on this special Mother's Day but I realize this Mother's Day oftentimes is a great day of celebration but it can also be a time of of sadness maybe you've lost your mother or maybe this is your first time without her or without your child and so we recognize that many people come even on a day like this of celebration and thanksgiving with a lot of hurt in their heart and so we're just thankful that we serve a god who is able to heal the broken pieces of our lives in that regard i actually want to invite a special family uh, up here with me this morning uh, the staffords if y'all could come not the whole crew because they got a whole crew with them just you know just a couple of them especially one that has a little baby with them and stuff and i'm, I'm gonna take a moment could you give me those chairs right there and um we're gonna stick uh, shelby and little andrew right in the middle and all and so i want to uh, invite them to come up and just kind of introduce them we're good kai as far as everything that you can see thanks buddy all right, thank you, ma'am, as well. So uh, I want to invite them, and, and you know, we'll, we'll however y'all want to situate this. Happy Mother's Day to you, ma'am. And so um, uh, I'm going to give you this mic. You have to hold it real close because half of our folks, including myself, are deaf. As I learned, um, oh, it is, you got it here. I'll turn it on. Yeah, I went to um, Pizza Inn, Angela Stafford. Um, I went to Pizza Inn, Angela, the other day, and, and her husband told me to give her a shout-out and all. And so... Um, uh, when I went there, the, the girl said, look, I don't want to be rude. You know, if you ever say that, then you rude right there. Um, she, said, she said, I don't want to be rude, uh, but do you qualify for the 55 and over discount? And I'm like, you know, y'all know me. I mean, I just got my pants for $9 on clearance yesterday and stuff, so I'm all about a discount. Uh, but when I went over there, she's like, you know, well, I'm not trying to be rude. She's like, but you look 55 and over. And so, um, but since some of you think I'm 60, that, that's just fine as well. Uh, thank y'all for sitting up there in the balcony. I try to give y'all a fan, so hopefully when it blows on you and your hair kind of wafts in the wind, you'll be able to say yes, thank you for that. All right, so let's go on and, and introduce yourselves. Um, tell us who you are, and, uh, and we'll kind of go from there. And then I'm, I got some questions for you, okay? And so uh, just introduce yourselves to us. I'm Shelby, Andrew's mama. And I'm Trevor. All right, so this here is Trevor and Shelby Stafford, okay? And so uh, this morning, let me ask you a couple of questions. Tell, tell, me about, um, tell me about Andrew's life, his birth, and, and, you know, just some of the circumstances around that. I had Andrew when I was 27 weeks pregnant. He was one pound and 11 inches long. We didn't get to hold him until he was three weeks old. He spent the first six months of his life in the NICU at Woman's Hospital in Baton Rouge. Since then, he has had an additional 45 overnight stays in hospitals. He has been transferred by helicopter twice and by ambulance twice. 
He has been in criti- he has been sick and in critical condition two different times where we didn't know if he was going to make it or not. He even had the doctors worried about him. Apparently this morning he's doing just fine. <laughs> Um, Both of those times he was sedated and paralyzed to where the ventilator could do all of the work for him because his body was too sick to handle breathing. He has had more than 130 x-rays. He has been poked in the heels of his feet with needles more than 200 times and there is no telling how many times he has been poked with a needle to start an IV. He has overcome pneumonia, parainfluenza, staph infection that was in his central line in his neck, a blood clot in his leg that was from another central line, rhinovirus, COVID, and many other things. On June 23rd of last year, when he had parainfluenza, his heart stopped and he had to have CPR performed for about five to seven minutes. A few days later, after being transferred to Children's in New Orleans, they were preparing to put him on a machine called ECMO. That is a machine that your blood circulates through and bypasses your heart and lungs so that they can rest, but it comes with so many side effects. As they prepared to put him on it, he began to get better and show improvement. He eventually recovered and was able to come home. Okay, so, uh, amen. Now, our second question was this, and this was the second question we were going to ask. We were going to say, well, how's he doing now? <laughs> and, and you might be able to tell, okay, will we'll, we'll tell us, amen. Um, you've already kind of seen that. And, you know, uh, you can see on the screen up there, um, you can tell that this was once an extremely uh, sick little boy. This was the size of his first diaper. Yeah. <laughs> now, so how is he doing now? He's doing great. Um, he's cr- crawling everywhere. He likes to pull up on everything. Um, he's eating everything. He likes to torture the dogs and the cat. Um, he loves watching TV. He has went from being on almost 10 different medicines to now only on three. Um, he has went from being on oxygen 24-7 to just at nighttime and nap time, but this morning he was breathing kind of fast, so he had to have it. Yeah. And if you can tell how fast he's moving, you can see why he's breathing fast and stuff, amen? <laughs> and so, you know, so I, I've really had the privilege of, of knowing the, uh, the Staffords for a, a, a long time, um, you know, just their, their whole crew. And so, um, so I imagine, you know, being, being a preacher's kid and stuff, uh, uh, Trevor and, and family, uh, brother Mike Stafford is his dad and stuff, and he is a pastor, and so, so you guys have kind of grown up around, you know, things of God and things of the Lord, but I imagine a time like this, you've probably learned some things, so what are some things that you would say, okay, God, God kind of taught me some things through this time? He has taught us more than I can say, um, to be patient, that you are never alone, and that he is always with you. He is always listening and to always be strong and never give up. This has tested me emotionally, mentally, and physically. It has even tested our marriage, but God has brought us through this. And also, I want to share this Bible verse with y'all. Joshua chapter 1, verse 9. This is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. It doesn't matter what you are going through. The Lord is there for you, and he is capable of absolutely anything. This little boy right here is our miracle, and I really believe that he wouldn't be here if it wasn't for our God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, as we, um, as we let them go and take a little picture and all, and so... Um, when you think about the goodness of God and what the Lord has done, and, and we think about how gracious the Lord has been, look, on this Mother's Day, we want to celebrate most of all, not, not just those mothers that we've been thankful for and blessed with, but we want to give thanks to the Lord for the blessing and the gift of the Lord Jesus Christ and some precious kids. And so those of you who are back there in that place, all right, in the Welcome Center, y'all start making your way over this way because they, they can see me. I'm talking to them on the screen right now and all. And so, so as they kind of make their way, I want to introduce to you several families that today are coming together to say, you know what, we're going to be dedicating our child unto the Lord. And so as they kind of make their way, 
Miranda, would you mind playing a little bit like of the blessing or something? Just a, just a little background music. I don't want to put you on the spot and stuff, but just kind of get you in there and all. And so, so as we call their names forward today, thank you so much for being here with us. Um, we, we want to introduce them, and they may come up in the order of alphabetically. They may not. Um, but I want to introduce you, first of all, Quinn Marie Anderson. And so uh, her, uh, her folks are Carly and Michael. She was just born this year. Uh, she loves to eat whatever that stuff is that Mama puts in her bottle. She loves when anyone talks to her or shows her attention. And her favorite person is her mama. And so uh, we're just thankful for them. Next up, we have uh, Marlo Lynn Carroll. Uh, she was born in 2019. And so um, as they gather together, her favorite food is actually asparagus. You can imagine a kid loving asparagus. But her favorite words are, wait, I got an idea. Um, she, her favorite thing is her pink bunny, her favorite people, her mom and daddy. And you may not know this, but you may know it just by looking. Uh, uh, the Carols are actually expecting a new one, little girl Mason. And so she is on the way. It could be, happen as, as soon as like next week or so. Uh, hopefully not this week. All right. Hopefully not today. Um, but that would be an adventure we'd never forget. All right. And so next up as well, uh, I want you to introduce to you uh, Hester Mae Daigle. She's 11 months old, Casey and Morgan are her parents. She loves food or anything chocolate. Uh, hey, and I love you are her words. Uh, she loves anything that her Bubba's doing, and her favorite person is her Bubba, Jathan, and maybe even her daddy. Jathan Dennis Daigle, we see him as well. He's two years old. His favorite food is Reese's. He loves fire trucks and cop cars and helping daddy with anything he does. His favorite person is actually his baby sister as well. Right next to him, we see Emory Lane Dillard. Justin Lee or her family, and so uh, she was born in 2019. She, she actually answered these questions herself. She said her favorite food was Chick-fil-A. Her favorite person is Nene, only because Nene was the one who asked her the question at that time. Uh, she loves uh, her mama and um, anything else. Uh, she, she cannot stop talking, and so you'll hear her all the time and on. So we're thankful for her. Next up, you see Bryce Thomas Hollis, and um, he is two months old. Tiffany and Jonathan are his mom and daddy. He loves to eat, watch Disney+, Plus, loves car rides, loves being outside. He loves playing with his toys. He loves the water. He loves listening to Christian music as well and being read to at night. Next up, we have Alana. We know her as Lala. Brooke Lawrence, uh, Kayla and Virgil are her parents. And so she was born in 2018. Pizza, music, and singing, anything. And her mommy is her favorite person as well. Uh, along with them right now, we have these folks. Hazel Leanne Blanche Lott and Maggie Anna Lee Rain Lott. Uh, Hazel's favorite thing is um, uh, eggs and uh, melon, and her favorite word is melon. She loves uh, her baby sister, and Autumn and Wilson are their parents. And um, come on right here. Uh, next up, we have Maggie as well, and so her favorite food is her formula. Her favorite noise is her mama's voice, and her favorite person is her is her mama. Brennick's Carson Mizell is up here as well, and so he was born just a, just a, quite not very long ago. 4:14 was his birthday. Ryan and Christian are his parents, and he's got great grand, uh, grandparents of Chad and Linda Thomas, and brothers Brogan and Bentley and Bryce, and a number of great grandparents as well. We're thankful for them. You'll see Brody Houston Lewis Pitts up here, and uh, if y'all need to, go ahead and uh, hold him up like Asabena this morning and all. And so, um, but little Brody, uh, Kayla and Brandon are his parents, and uh, he loves watching Octonauts and Bubble Guppies. He loves swinging and loves any and all crazy noises that you make. Amen. Loves his play mat and uh, noise and kicks it laughing when he kicks the piano keys. And he not only loves his mom, but he loves to hear the word mama as well. Uh, right next to him is his cousin, Amelia Claire Pritchard. Jay and Shelby are their parents. and uh, She was born just in 2021. She loves spaghetti, Cheeto puffs, eggs, and I was told recently that she loves donuts as well, right? And so uh, turkey sounds is her, her favorite thing and uh, Dada as well or Dada or you know, she can translate that for you. Uh, she loves her animals and her pawpaw as well. Uh, Russ and Taylor Pritchard, we're so thankful that they made it this morning. And so um, Jessica and Jake are their parents, and he was born in 2021. Uh, right now he loves sweet potato baby food, and he has recently found his voice and started talking as well. And so his favorite people are his mom and dad. We also have Colton J. Ricotta. And so um, hopefully you can see that little guy just hold him up. Oh, there you go right there. And so Michael and Kayla are his parents. Uh, he was born just in 2021. Favorite food is strawberries. His favorite noise is uh, yum, 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 yum. And um, his favorite person is Charlie, which is AKA Sissy. Camelia Blair Scott is here. Where, where is little Camelia? There, there we go right there on that side. And so Chandler and Cassidy are her, her parents. 
Uh, she was born in 2019. Salad and pizza are her favorite, and her favorite person, according to her mom, is her daddy, and so we're thankful for that. Uh, along with him, we see little Hudson Cade Scott. Uh, he was born on March 9th of this year. Uh, his favorite thing is milk, and so his favorite is his mama as well. And so uh, as we gather together today, we continue with uh, Andrew Lane Stafford. And so y'all have met little Andrew already. And so this year's Andrew, Shelby, and Trevor are his parents. He was born in 2020. Um, he wasn't supposed to be born until October 29th, but he loves fish sticks Loves saying dad, dad, and nah, nah, and he loves his first siblings and watching Bluey on TV. A couple more. Canyon Paul Timms is the uh, son of Brooke and T Landon. Uh, he was born in 2014. He loves riding his four-wheeler, going camping, watching TV. Food, steak, and pickles are his favorite, and his favorite word is but, 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 but. And uh, his favorite person is his mom and dad, so he says. Along with the Timms, we see his little brother, Cohen Briar Timms. His favorite things are riding his tractor and his, uh, his baby blanket is what he loves as well. Food is pancakes and a ham sandwich. His favorite word is, I can't want that. His favorite person is his daddy. And then last up, we have the Williams crew. And so y'all may have to hold them up and stuff as well. Where did they end up at? And so there we go. Um, I'll introduce all three of them to you. Phoebe Lily Ann Williams, Brianna Grace Lynn Williams. And she doesn't know that's her name. She goes by Gracie. And then Harper Everly Faith Williams as well. Um, Phoebe's favorite is uh, Triangle Pizza. She loves saying seriously, and, uh, and she loves her Nana as well. Uh, Gracie's favorite is spaghetti, and she loves to eat and say that word eat, and her favorite is her Bubba. And then also we come right now with Harper uh, Faith, and, and her favorite is Cheetos. She loves to say Dada, and her favorite is her Mommy. Would y'all give these families a huge hand for just a moment? Amen, amen. Now, as we, um, as we look at all these families, you online, you may not see the enormity of all these folks that are here with us, but uh, as we gather together today, and you know, this is a very special time, they have each received a gift, and inside of those gifts, and we'll make sure that we get those to you if you didn't get one for your child, inside of there is going to be a Bible, and that Bible is a representative of God's Word and what the Lord says, and so we wanted to give a gift from the church family to these, these families. It is representative of a Bible. Now, here's the reason why we gave a Bible. Parents, uh, I want you to know today that, you know what, and grandparents, I want you to know that your children may not remember this special time in their life. All right, looking at their ages, they not, may not remember exactly all that happened here, but you know who will is your, the parents. And I wanted to, to, to teach you a, a verse from 1 Samuel chapter 1. This woman had prayed for a child. Her name was Hannah. She had prayed for that child. The Lord finally answered her prayer. And then what the, this woman, Hannah, did was, as that the Lord gave her this child in return, she said, I will give this child back into the Lord and he will be dedicated unto the Lord. So what we're doing today, parents, is this. We're not only coming together to say we're dedicating these children, but here's the most important thing. Your children follow your example in everything. Your children follow the way that you walk, the way that you talk, the things that you love, the things that you care about. And so today, we hope that the greatest thing that your children will learn from you is how to walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. And so as we dedicate these children to the Lord, we especially want to dedicate these families to the Lord as well. So I'm going to ask for just a moment, parents, if you promise today, you make a vow between the Lord and these folks here, your family and friends that have gathered, if you make this vow, that I promise, all right, listen, parents, I promise to raise my child in the ways of the Lord so that at that day that they are of the age to give their life to Jesus Christ, that I will do all that I can to lead my child to the Lord. Would you say amen to that? Amen. amen. Now, parents, I'm going to ask you as well, though. Will you dedicate your own self to say, you know what, Lord, whatever you need to do in my life, however you want me to give my life totally to you, then I will do that as well because I want to lead my child by example. And today, if you make that promise to just say, I want to follow and dedicate myself to the Lord, would you say amen to that as well? Amen. Well, friends, let me pray for y'all. And like I said, parents, you are definitely welcome to, uh, to sit down. Uh, it is Mother's Day, and one of the traditions that we have, which may be the last year that we do this tra tradition, is to have all the children in here during Mother's Day as well, because it's a family Mother's Day kind of thing. We may never do that again. Next year, we may have children's church. But this year, this year, we won't. But it's okay, and so, you know, it'll be a shorter service. It'll be a great time. But if at any point in time you say, well, 
I need to take my child out, where do I go? The same welcome center that you came in on to take pictures will be a place that will be welcome for you to go back to as well. All right, so let us pray together this morning as we just dedicate these children and parents to the Lord. Church family, let's pray together for them. You pick a face before you and pray for them. Father, we're so thankful today for each parent and child who is here. We pray, Father God, that you might use this as an opportunity to draw them and their parents closer to the Lord Jesus Christ. For one day, these children will be confronted with the gospel and having to make a decision for the Lord Jesus Christ. And I pray that when that day comes, that because of the example and the love that the parents have shown and have a love relationship with God, that one day they would have that love relationship as well. So, Lord, we place these families, these children into your hands. We thank you for them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated this time. Thank you all. Give them a huge hand. Amen. you give, especially to your mom, that you would say, Mom, you always should do this. Always clean your rooms. Oh, yeah. My mom, you need my room. You need your mom to clean your room? You don't clean your room? Your no, mom? no. She does. Okay. Okay. Does your mom clean your room? Who cleans your room? Me and Okay. So tell all the moms out there to tell their kids to clean their room. No, tell your kids to clean your room. Okay. No, tell the mom to clean your room. Okay. We've got a little fight here. I'm not sure which one. So let's take a vote. Mom should clean your room. Raise your hand. Kids should clean their room. Raise their hand. We've got one who says kids should do it and the rest of us say mothers. So if y'all can tell your mom one thing, would you tell them happy Mother's Day? We love you. All right, let's say it together on count of three. Look through the camera with your sweetest <laughs> eyes ever. One, two, three. Happy Mother's Day. Love y'all. Is that good? Yeah. All right, any other things? All right. Hey, Amen. Look, we want to invite, uh, if we could, why don't you come over here, ma'am. Uh, the other day, um, I had a, uh, an interesting conversation. Um, introduce yourself to folks who, who may not know who you are and your beloved husband back there. I'm Miranda Carpenter, and that's David, my husband. All right. <laughs> and y'all have gone through this little dedication part a, a while back, right? The boys are uh, great young men and all. And, and so on the screen, you can kind of see something going on. It, it's, uh, Miranda showed me some pictures of some stuff that she was making. I actually have a finished product on my little lapel pin and stuff. What is that, and what are we looking at, and what's happening here? Um, the process is just making clay jewelry. Okay. And, and you mentioned this word called a potsherd in the Bible, uh, which is what? A potsherd is just pretty much a broken piece of clay, something that's broke off another vessel or pretty much anything. You know, just a broken piece. Okay. It's so a it's useless a useless piece. A useless, <laughs> broken piece, kind of something that's discarded. But what they would do is they would take that and put it together and make something beautiful out of it. And then this is what you told me, and I just want to quote this and see where you were coming from. You, you said at the end, you said, this is kind of like my life story. Mm -hmm. What did you mean by that? Well, I think um, we all go through different things in our lives, but we all have brokenness and broken pieces and things that, you know, seem like we can't get over them. They're too hard to 
to face, too hard to get through, and you just want to give up. And that's what, kind of like what a pot shirt is. It's just a broken piece of clay on the ground. But if you give it to the master potter, then he can turn it into something beautiful. And throughout my life, I've, like everybody else, have faced many hardships and many struggles and had lots of brokenness. And I was like, God, where are you? <laughs> are you here? Um, probably lost my faith a few times. And, uh, you know, it was just hard. But finally, I decided to give in and just give it to God and let him fix it and make it into something beautiful. Okay, so as we've been going over this whole idea of like broken pieces, you notice the puzzle pieces that are before you. So the Lord has kind of taken some of those pieces, put them together in, in his orchestrated way. He's the master potter. And, and so the end result is, um, is that some stuff you're wearing on your head right now? Okay. All right, and so I don't know if y'all could see it from where you're seated at, you know, those of you watching online and stuff, you know, just kind of give a Vanna White kind of display and stuff for a moment. Yeah, exactly. Um, but if you notice where it started from to where it ended up at, the Lord's able to take all those broken pieces, and whether it's a piece of jewelry or a cross lapel pin, the reality is that the Lord has taken that, right? Right. Um, what, what, what advice would you give then to mothers here today who may feel like, you know what, I'm broken when it comes to being a mom, when it comes to fulfilling all the, the roles as a mother that I should, you know, what encouragement would you give? I would just say keep trucking because we all know this life is hard. But if we just lay on the ground like a broken piece of clay, then nothing's ever going to happen. Um, God's process and his timing is impeccable. And the process you see up there, it's very time consuming. And you have to start with broken pieces, but then you add different things to it. You add fire, you add heat, you add a pretty gloss. But it all takes time. And we can't expect everything to happen overnight, everything that we want, or everything that we desire or need, or a situation that needs to be changed. So we just have to keep praying, keep trucking, and know and understand that He is there and He's taking care of things. Amen, amen. Along those lines, we want to sing this song today. It's called Broken Vessels. And as broken vessels, we come to the Lord, but in the end we sing just, Lord, it's about your amazing grace, how sweet the sound that it would save a wretch like me. Would you stand with us as we sing this song of dedication to the Lord?
Amen. You can be seated for just a moment as you're seated. Let me turn your attention towards the uh, word of the Lord found in 1 Samuel chapter 1. 1 Samuel chapter 1. Janessa, good to see you, baby. We've been praying for you and so thankful for you being here today. But 1 Samuel chapter 1, it begins a story of a mother who had known everything about it was to be broken. She was a woman who had experienced hardship in life, prayers in life that didn't go answered. Year after year, she struggled with things, and she just began to wonder to herself, is God ever going to answer this prayer of the depths of my heart? She was a woman who experienced broken pieces. And whether you're in the balcony at the very end or you're in the very front pew, which is like, you know, why am I sitting in the very chair in the very front? No matter where you are today, I guarantee you, there have been times in your life that you feel broken, scattered, where it just seems like my whole life is not at peace, my life does not make sense. I just feel like this woman by the name of Hannah. And for a very quick moment, as you look in 1 Samuel chapter 1, 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 27, the Bible says, I prayed for this boy, and since the Lord gave me what I asked him for, I now give the boy back to the Lord. And so here this old time, as we begin to think about what Hannah did, she prayed to God for this one piece that she thought to herself was the missing piece of her life. That one part, if she could just have a child. And I know that many of you have gone through that prayer. Some of you have been watching online. You've gone through that prayer of like, you know what? Is God ever going to give me a child? And so she prayed and prayed and prayed. And then finally the Lord gave her what she asked for. But here's the situation. Her biggest missing piece of her life wasn't this little baby boy because she had other broken pieces in her life as well. In fact, here's a crazy part of her life. She was the second of wives to this man that she was married to. He had two wives at the time, and so she was the second one. The good thing was, the Bible says she was the favorite wife. You know, I don't know if any of y'all have watched like sister wives and stuff. Well, they had that kind of situation going on in their life. And so she was the favorite one. In fact, her husband gave her the double portion, but because of the fact that she was the favorite one, you know who didn't quite like that? You know who didn't approve of this situation? You know who wasn't a big fan? It was the other woman. And so that other woman made her miserable. She provoked her. She treated her harshly year after year, month after month, day after day. She mistreated Hannah because of the fact that she was the favorite one, but she was the one that had no kids, so she'd rub it in her face day after day. I don't know if you've ever had trouble and problems in your life to where somebody rubs that in your face day after day. Look at what you've done. Look at what habits you've got. Look at what situation you're in. And so that was the story of Hannah's life. Verse 6 of 1 Samuel chapter 1, you can see it in your Bible. It says that she provoked her severely, made her miserable year after year. She wept and did not eat. Her husband didn't understand. He even went to her at one time. And he said, look, Hannah, am I not better to you than 10 sons could ever be? He had no clue what the heart problem was that she had. She just desperately longed for. And so in bitterness of soul, she wept in anguish. It even got so bad that one day she was at the church and she was praying. She may pray like some of y'all do. She intently prayed to God, but her her, her mouth was moving, but not a word came out because she just, in her heart, she desperately was grieving, desperately needed an answer. She just went and brought everything before the Lord. She had no peace. So it was, the Bible says in verse 7, that year after year, this is what she did. She would go to the temple, pray, God, would you bless me with a child? Year after year, God, you didn't answer last year, would you do it this year? God, day after day, year after year, and she just wept bitterly out of an abundance of grief. She began to experience that day after day, and here was her prayer. You may not have noticed in verse 11 of your Bible, in 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 11, it says, she made a vow to the Lord, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on the affliction of your maidservant and remember me and not forget your maidservant, but will give your maidservant a male child, then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life. Here are two things, and we'll make this real fast. There are two things that we learn about Hannah. The first one was, before she ever dedicated her life to the Lord or dedicated her child to the Lord, she first dedicated her life to the Lord. Let me say that again more clearly. Before she ever dedicated her child to the Lord, she dedicated herself to the Lord first. That was the first thing that she did, that she went and she dedicated herself to God first. She knew that she could not just dedicate her children to the Lord, the son to the Lord, until she first was prayed up, dedicating herself to the Lord day after day after day. Here's something I was thinking about the other day, and I had a, 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 a conversation with a buddy of mine. He said, sometimes we ask God to bless our mess. You ever notice that? 
God, if you just bless this mess, God, I know that we're not living right, just bless this mess anyway. God, I don't want to do what you want me to do, but you need to take care of my kids, my job, my bills, you need to take care of that stuff. And so we ask God oftentimes, God, would you just bless the mess that I'm in? I know I'm not doing what you want me to do, I know I'm not as close to you as I should, but God, just bless the mess that I am in. That is not what Hannah did. Hannah didn't just say, Lord, you know what, just bless what I'm doing. No, no, she first said, the first thing I'm going to do is dedicate myself to the Lord. She surrendered everything to Christ. Now listen, as a church, we had more people dedicated up here than some churches actually have people in the church itself, all right? And so we have to realize what a blessing it is to see children here at this place, to see them on Wednesday nights and on Sunday mornings. It is a blessing, amen? Anybody want to say it's a blessing to see these families? But parents, mamas, daddies, listen to me now. Your kids will do exactly what you do. They will love exactly what you love. They will act exactly how you act. You probably notice this when you have a toddler and all of a sudden they learn some words. It's like, oh, where did they learn that from? Guess what? They learned it from somewhere. They do the things that they do. Why? Because they learned it from somewhere. And so we have to realize this. Mom and dad, the greatest responsibility that you have is your child. That is absolutely true. But the blessing of that child means that I must first dedicate myself to the Lord Jesus Christ. And so if you want that child to grow in the ways of the Lord, you have to grow in the ways of the Lord. If you want that child to serve the Lord and to just make decisions that are godly decisions based on what God wants for their life, you've got to be the one that gives them the example. And so before we dedicate our children to the Lord, we have to say, Lord, I need you. Lord, I want to follow you. Lord, I, w- I want to give you every part of my life. And so mamas and daddies, I am thankful for you. Listen, as your pastor, and you know, and I, officially and unofficially as your pastor, for some of you, I want you to know that I am thankful for you being here today for this traditional time that we dedicate these kids. It is an awesome time, an awesome remembrance. You've got a Bible that, that has, you know, the, the very word of the Lord that we give to these kids. But listen to me now. The reality is that once you leave this place, the way that you live, the way that you talk, the way that you walk with Jesus Christ, you have to leave here knowing I I have dedicated myself to the Lord. And so the way that she did that was that she gave every piece of herself to the Lord first before she ever gave anything back to the Lord. If you want to do something today, you need to give every piece of yourself to the Lord. Every little piece. And so that's what this woman did. She, She realized, I will not find peace in my life until I first make peace with God. How do I make peace with God? I give him every piece of my life. And so for some of you parents, I want to encourage you. Mamas, papas, mama, daddy, mama, papa, whatever your name might be, today's the day that you ought to dedicate yourself to the Lord. Single folks, today's the day that you ought to dedicate yourself to the Lord. Young people up in the balcony, today's the day that you ought to dedicate yourself to the Lord. Listen, today's the day that you ought to say, you know what, Lord, I need to give my whole life to you. I need to surrender everything of my life to you. And so all of a sudden, he comes to this time in his life where he dedicates herself to the Lord, but the end result is that... The end result was this, that she still wasn't at peace. She said, Lord, give me a child, and then the Lord blessed her with a child. The Lord said, you know what, from now on, this next year, I'm going to bless you with a child. You're going to have a child. And and she said, you know what, I'm going to name him Samuel, and I'm going to dedicate him his entire life to the Lord. I'm going to give him every part of his life to the Lord, and that's what the Lord did. So all of a sudden, she still was not at peace, and she wasn't at peace until we find in verse 26 and 27, She says in verse 27, for this child I prayed, the Lord has granted me what I asked for of him, and now I give him back to the Lord. Here's the whole point of today's. The whole point of this is this. When you dedicate yourself to the Lord, that's the first step. But if you really want to find peace in the pieces of your life, then you have to give the Lord back what he has already given to you. You say, what does that mean? Mamas, that kid does not belong to you. That precious little boy, that precious little girl, that baby does not belong to you. Dad, you may have been the one who who made that child, but listen to me, that kid ain't yours. He is on loan to you. You are renting him for a little season, for a little while, because you know, a a lot of you guys had graduate recognition, we'll do that next week, and some of y'all have graduates who graduated this past week, and even in the week to come, you understand this, that child is given to you for a short amount of time, and before you know it, they're grown having babies of their own. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I mean, before you know it, they're already grown, they're out of your house, they're having babies of their own, they're doing their own life, they're living their own way. And so you only have a certain time that God says, here, I give you this gift of this child. So what do you do? You say, I give my life to the Lord first, but then I give back to the Lord what he gave to me. That's where she found peace. Can you imagine the scene for a moment? She's been praying for this child. God, give me this child. God, would you just surrender? I, I, just, I just want a little baby boy. God, would you give it to me? And when God finally answered the prayer, she didn't keep that baby to herself. 
She didn't hold and said, no, this is mine. This belongs to me. I'm not letting this thing go. No, what did she do? She realized God gave it, and now I give it back to him. The peace that you're looking for when it comes to raising your kids, when it comes to living your life, the peace that you're looking for is by you saying, God, you gave it to me, and now I give it back to you. I don't care if it's your finances, if it's your family, if it's your marriage, if it's your children, if it's your spouse. You say, God, you gave it to me, and now I give it back to you. Every breath that you breathe has been given to him, now you give it back to him. Every word that comes out of your mouth ought to be a reflection of all that God has given to me. This woman here found peace in the pieces when finally she gave back to the Lord all that she was given from the Lord. All right, let me do it this way. Andrew awake? All right. Trevor, we've known each other for a little while, all right? And so, um, so it's been about 18 years, and Trevor's like 19 years now anyway and stuff, right? You know, how old are you now? Okay. So Trevor is 24. So about like, you know, six years old and stuff. Man, I, yeah, wow, wow. So, so what I want you to do is, because we've known each other a while, um, Throw me, Andrew. Let I me mean, just throw him to me. Like, can, can you throw him right now? I mean, just, just chunk him. All right, Miss Andrew will move. You know, she'll be fine and stuff. And so, all right. Now, now, if he did do that after the story, this one-pound baby, he's like, you know, the, the little bitty baby diaper and stuff. It's so cute. Now, if, if he, as a dad would take that baby and chunk him up here with the uh, oxygen tank and everything. If he were to do that, Miss Angela, what would you say would happen to him? Okay, you would take Trevor outside, like, like back in the day, little switch, bam, all right? Now you would say to yourself, man, why did that dude throw that baby? Did y'all, man, over at Westside, they throwing babies and stuff, you know, like, hide your kids, hide your wife, they throwing babies up in here. And so, you know, so, so if they did that, y'all be like, man, what, what, kind of, what kind of father would throw that kid? Now, 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 if you were to let me have Andrew, let's, let's test this out. How would, you, how, how would you bring Andrew to me? What would you do? All right, well, let's see you do that. Yeah, it's not a test. This is real. This is real. So, so he would gather his stuff. He, he'd gather the baby. He's not chunking them. He's not taking them. But every piece of Andrew that he could find right now that is necessary for Andrew, he would take him, and we'll see if this works. He would take him and say, hey, come here, boy. You want to come right here? He'd say, oh, yeah. Say, I like little Hawaiian people. All right. So he would take them and he'd hand them to me. And when he would hand them to me, he didn't chunk them to me. He actually trusted because we've known each other since he was six years old. He actually said, you know what? I think, amen, I think that the preacher, he won't drop him. He's about 55, 60 years old, but he, he's still strong enough to hold, hold Andrew. And, and so what he would do is, is that he would hand me Andrew. He didn't chunk him. He didn't throw him, but he said, you know what? I'm going to for a moment. I know he's up here too. I can't take two at a time though. <laughs> but he would say, you know what? I'm going to trust that the preacher ain't going to drop him. And what I would do then is, is after I would take him and, and make sure that he's good. And, and for this morning, wait at people. He'd fulfill his purpose right here this morning of testifying that there is a God and testifying of his goodness. And he's trying to raise his hand up in church and stuff and stuff. When he would do that, then, then I would do this. I would gently place that baby boy back into his daddy's arms. I didn't throw him. I placed him right back in his arms, and he held him right there. See, he didn't throw him to me. He trusted me to take his boy, place him in my arms, and then afterwards to give him back. This is what Hannah did. Hannah said, you know what, Lord? I'm going <laughs> to... Oh, yeah? He said, I'm going to give the Lord. Don't act like, you know, don't be surprised because some of y'all just like that. <laughs> give yourself to the Lord. Throwing stuff down. Don't want to have... Uh, 
happy moment anymore. It's like, okay, I'm, I'm good with this. But this is what I want to encourage you to do. What is your Andrew in your life? What is the thing that God says, hey, I want that? You say, Lord, I don't know if I can trust you with that. My family, I don't know if I can trust you with that. My kids, I don't know if I can give that back to you. I, I prayed for this one. I don't know. I don't, oh, I don't know. God's saying, okay, what you need to do is you need to first dedicate yourself. He, Trevor had to trust me not to drop his baby boy. So he had to dedicate himself to say, okay, I'm going to trust the preacher not to drop him. But then he had to be willing to let his boy go. Preacher didn't do too bad. He held him for a moment, and then he gave him back. And the Lord says, look, you're going to give me your child, your life, your blessing. And then after a while, I'll give him back to you. And when I do, and when I do, you're on loan. You're going to want that thing. And at times, you're going to say, will you give it to me everything? Or really hold back some of the pieces. Now look, bud. Hey, bro. Hey, dude. Hey, right here. How about that? Okay. <laughs> That's what we're saying not to do. But what will you do today? Are you going to hold it? Are you going to drop it? Or how about this? How about giving it into Daddy's hands? And Daddy will hold it a lot better than we ever could. Give your Andrew to Jesus today. Whatever that is. By first saying, I'm going to dedicate myself to the Lord. And I'm going to dedicate everything that God's given me. I'm going to give it back to Him. Would you bow for just a moment? You can go down, brother. Appreciate you. So parents, I'm going to ask you today, is there something that you need to get back to the Lord? Right now is the time to do that. Some of y'all have been saved and you had not been baptized. Some of y'all know that this is the place that you want to call your church home and you haven't made a decision yet. Some of y'all have done a lot of things, but you haven't made that public. Today's the day to do that. To give it back to the Lord and place it into His hands. The altar is open. There's some puzzle pieces. If you're still praying about some things that don't make sense right now, there's some puzzle pieces down there that says I'm going to pick one of those up to remind myself of what God can only do. To put the pieces, the broken pieces back together. And so, Father, we're thankful for this moment, this time in your house. We're thankful for each person who's here. But, God, today we pray that in those broken pieces of our life, that Jesus might shine through. So if there's somebody here today, Father, who needs to give their life to Jesus and be saved, that today they give their life to a Jesus who not only rescued and saved a little child, but gave his only son, Jesus, to give us eternal life. And so, Father, I pray for somebody here today who's never given their life to Jesus today be that day. If they need to make a decision for Christ, they would do that even today. And that, Father, today, whether they're online or whether they're here in person, that today would be the day that we surrender and give back to Jesus for all that he's given us. In Jesus' name, amen. As we close, would you listen for a moment as Kim sings this song? Every time I try to make it on my own Every time I try to stand, I start to fall all those lonely roads that I have traveled on There was Jesus Amen When the life I built came crashing to the ground When the friends I had were nowhere to be I couldn't see it then, but I could see it now. There was Jesus. In the waiting, in the searching, in the healing and the hurting, like a blessing buried in the broken pieces. Every minute, every moment, where I've been and where I'm going, even when I didn't know, I couldn't see it, 
that song is real simple. In the waiting and the, the hurting and the healing and all those times that there was Jesus. And friends, as we leave here today and you're going to go and you know, some of y'all watching online will be eating crawfish and some of y'all, you know, mama's already had to cook and stuff or maybe y'all going to take her out. Let me know where you're going to eat because I don't want to go there because, you know, everybody's going to eat this morning. So, But wherever you're going from this place, Whatever you've been through to get to this place, listen, friends, in every broken piece, there was Jesus. And so I'd love to talk to you about Jesus Christ. And, uh, before you leave, I want you to know if you need to take a family picture, th there's a backdrop just right around the corner there. I'm going to be sitting in there on the couch. Just because preachers don't work but one day a week anyway, so I'm just going to chill afterwards. And so, But I'm going to be in there, and I'd love to talk to you. Maybe you didn't have a chance to come down in front of everybody this morning and say, I want to make a decision for Christ. We want to talk to you about the Lord, maybe about being a part of this church family here. Whatever it is, let's have a moment to talk. But if Brother Wayland's going to sing over you this morning. That, that chorus, that song, just talks about, you know what, there was Jesus. You may not know all the words, but would you sing that part? There, there was Jesus. In every moment of my life, he was right there. Listen for a moment. In the waiting, in the searching, in the healing, in the hurting, like a blessing buried in the broken pieces. Every minute, every moment, where I've been and where I'm going, even when I didn't know it, I couldn't see you say it. All right, I want to announce to you and just make a, a public decision, and so we want to recognize that. Christy and, uh, and boys, would y'all come on up here? I don't know if y'all have been knowing Caleb as well, and so I'm, I'm thankful for, 
for these young men. And so, um, uh, yeah, oh, come right here with sit, Sam with me. Yeah, I know. No, she usually wants to stand. The, every time Christy's come, um, your mama made me historically late to stuff. Uh, am I right, Tad? Is that true? Well, that's true, right? And so McKenna's like shook her head like that. Um, but so a lot of times, like, you know, Easter, I think y'all sat on the very front row. So we got you up on stage today. Oh, yeah, yeah, because he called him down again. But look, today, and, and I, I'm just so thankful for, for this family. Um, Noah comes today to say that, you know what, he had given his life to Jesus Christ. And so, so this is Noah right here. This is Noah, right? You just shake your head like that. So this is Noah, and so Noah had given his life to the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and so he hadn't been baptized. He didn't make a public profession of faith and be baptized. And so Noah comes today to say, you know what, I've given my life to the Lord Jesus Christ, and I want to follow him in believer's baptism. Caleb is actually a, a member of a sister Baptist church along with Christy. Uh, many of y'all have known this family for all of their lives, literally, for all of their lives. But today they say, you know what, we're, we're coming back home. Uh, we've been away at another place and another town and everything else. But today, um, upon his baptism, upon the, the receiving of a letter, they come today and say, hey, we'd like to move our membership to Westside Emanuel Baptist Church. As good Baptists, we need to make a vote on that. Would well, anybody like to make a motion that we accept them into the family? We have that motion. Do we have a second as well? we got to make that vision. All in favor, would you say amen this morning? Amen. amen. Praise the Lord for that. So, Brother Drake is usually the one who's gifted the privilege of baptizing um, some of our teenagers and stuff, but you ain't getting this one. And so, um, so I, I'm just thankful for, uh, for this one, and so we're, we're thankful for what the Lord is doing in their lives, and just really meaningful of that. And so as we close together today, I'm going to ask uh, Brother David uh, Griffin if he might come and close us in prayer. Our deacons are closing us in prayer. I'm thankful for their ministry of what the Lord is continuing to do in their life. And so uh, you have a deacon. You may not know this, but you'll be knowing this pretty soon. You as a church member have a deacon, and they'll be contacting you soon to let you know we're praying for you. Thank you all, mothers, um, from the bottom of my heart. Mama, good to see you on Tuesday. Um, but we're looking forward to, uh, to what the Lord's going to do. Even in the times if you've lost your mom and this is a hard time, I know for many of you, would you just simply say this week, boy, there was Jesus. He carried me like he carried the Stafford family. He's been there right by my side, and he's walked with me through this time. And so in those times, would you just simply say, Jesus was right there even when mom and daddy couldn't be. Brother David, why don't you close us in prayer? Then y'all. Thanks for joining us today at Westside Emanuel Baptist Church, the church that loves God and loves people. We want to invite you to come and join us every Sunday morning at 9.15 a.m. for Bible.